Hello and welcome. I'm Aman Mazingo, and this is the Afro Tales Podcast, a show that will explore the folklore, tales, myths, and legends of the African diaspora. Well, today we have two stories, both coming from Jamaica, both what is known as Anansi Tales. In the first story, we have a snake or bruh snake and how he lost his magic. And in the second story, we have a monster, some friends, and some people trying to fight their way to the next town over. I hope you enjoy today's stories. Well, let's get to it. How Bruh Snake Lost His Power Long ago, when Bruh Nancy, Bruh Tiger, and the rest lived peacefully in their village in West Africa, Bruh Snake became Bruh Nancy's best friend. Of course, Bruh Nancy's real name was Jack Mandora. In those days, Bruh Snake's tail was magical. It could create the illusion that he was a very handsome young man of regal bearing. However, he could not maintain the illusion whenever he was tired. Being a true Casanova like Bruh Nancy, Bruh Snake used his power in his tail to its full advantage. One day, he was in a neighboring village on business when he spied a very beautiful and delicate young lady approaching. His tail worked overtime. The young lady immediately became smitten with love for him. His charm was so superb that he swept her off her feet. Now, Bruh Snake was not the marrying type, but the young lady insisted that they had to get married before he could have his way with her. He was tempted to walk away from her right then and there, but the desire of his heart could not allow him to say goodbye to such a lovely creature. No, 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 no. So he decided to play along, for the time being, that is. He made a great show of proposing, which she accepted coyly. He then strutted like a prince while she introduced the rest of the family. You see, she had two brothers whose prowess and fierceness were legendary. They gave Bruh Snake a mean, hard look, which made him shake in his shoes. Nevertheless, he put the best on the outside. And before he could slither to his village and seek Bruh Nancy's advice, he found himself the groom in the largest and most elaborate wedding he had ever attended. Eventually, the time arrived when Bruh Snake had to say goodbye and take his bride home. He hurriedly left before nightfall, taking her on his back, which was the custom. Before he left, however, he was sternly warned by her two brothers, who gave him a look that would impale a boa constrictor. <laughs> Anyway, Bruh Snake set forth on his journey with his cheerful burden, ignoring all the warnings that were coming from the small inner voice in his head. Shortly after he had left the village, he started to tire, and his tail began to waver. He 
began to look more like a serpent and less like a man. Suddenly, the young lady glanced downward and found herself riding on a giant reptile which was heading towards a cave with her. She screamed and screamed again and again. Unknown to Bruce Snake, her brothers were following. Not far behind either. To see them home safely, so to speak. When they heard her scream, they rushed to the spot just in time to see the snake escaping through the woods. Not before having his tail severed, however, by the younger brother, one who was so swift that he caught the snake fleeing. Snake fled painfully home while the two brothers returned to their village with their sister. But poor brother Snake did not show his face again until his tail had to be gone. But alas, his new tail did not possess any of the magical powers the first one had. Poor Snake. That is why snakes no longer have magical powers in their tails. And whenever you see them, they're always heading for the nearest hole to hide. The end. Walk under me. As I ventured around the corner, there was the menace. I gave him one look and run away. The little old lady gesticulated dramatically as her ever-growing audience moaned in unison. They followed her every move as if enthralled. Everyone was all ears as she reaccounted her experience while on her way to the neighboring village the previous evening. According to her, she had encountered a monstrous creature. The villagers plied her with all sorts of questions and would have continued chatting and arguing had they not been interrupted by Bruh Rabbit. He seemed more agitated than usual and went on to explain that he had just run all the way from Woodpatch, a deeply wooded area situated roughly between the road to the neighboring village called Timbuktu. According to him, two of Bruh Ant's sons had gone to work in the neighboring village two days previously. They were expected to return home by nightfall. The following day came and went, however, without anyone hearing from them. The second evening came. Bruh Ant rounded up a posse of his closest neighbors to accompany him to search for his sons. On their way back to Timbuktu, as they rounded a deep bend close to Woodpatch, they observed an unbelievably large creature blocking their path. Wait, no, not blocking their path. It stood with both feet planted firmly on either side of the road. It had the appearance of a monstrous bird, for it was two-legged. It was so tall, however, that no one in the search party was able to see his head in the growing dust. Then it spoke in a voice that caused their blood to freeze. 
It only said three words. Walk under me. The neighbor scattered. Bro, Rabbit looked neither left nor right as he bunny hopped fast as he could. He did not know the whereabouts of the rest of the search party. He was hoping that the neighbors of the village would at least accompany him to Brian's house. You know, to see if any of the others had returned home safely. No one, and I mean no one, volunteered. The silence became deafening. Bruh, Rabbit even cleared his throat. <clears throat> Still, no one moved. Then someone suggested sending for Bruh Tiger. Huh? Bruh? Bruh Nancy too? Someone else suggested. And instead of waiting, Bruh Rabbit walked away and headed toward Bruh Nancy's house. He got along so much better with Brud Nancy than he ever did with Brud Tiger. And a small crowd followed him. Brud Nancy listened attentively. Then he got up slowly and drank some water. He turned to Brud Rabbit and asked him if he was willing to return to the spot that they had encountered the monster. Bird Rabbit said, yes. First, however, they took a beeline to Bruh and to dwelling. They spent a long time calling, but no one answered. They then went to call on Bruh Tiger. Bruh Nancy then suggested that they borrowed Brud Donkey's cart. They did so. And with a handful of villagers, they set off for Timbuktu. On the way, they loaded the cart with pieces of wood and handfuls of leaves. On the advice of Brud Nancy, they also carried two long pieces of rope. As they approached Woodpatch, Bruh Nancy began to give them instructions. The two long pieces of ropes were secured to the sides of the cart. Two persons held each piece while two pushed the cart. The rest of them walked a short distance in front. When they rounded the corner, there was the monstrous creature standing just as they said with legs firmly planted on either side of the road at the sight of it bro nancy led the small advance party straight at it in the middle of the road the men with the rope fanned out on both sides while the cart was pushed the creature was somewhat taken aback that they were not afraid of it. It nevertheless thanked the good fortune as the prospect of a healthy meal. While it was preoccupied with picking out the likeliest candidates of its first bites, the men with the ropes were busy tying the ends to its legs. As one of them lit the wood and trash on fire in the cart, it erupted in flames, which startled the creature. It backed away, but the cart followed. The flames were getting higher and higher. The creature croaked in fright and in pain as it felt the feathers beginning to singe. It moved frantically and flapped its two gigantic wings. Still, it could not escape the fiery cart. It then made a mad dash for the trees and disappeared in a flurry of ambers and sparks. It never returned. 
it was never seen again. No one knew what became of it. The entire village was, nevertheless, grateful to Brother Nancy for the role he played in getting rid of it. The end. Wow. Um, those were uh, two wonderful stories to read. Uh, the first story, Bruh Snake, I felt like he got what he deserved, you know? He won, he was a player. Um, let's, let's just be honest, he was a player. And two, he got himself into a situation that he didn't really know how to get out of. He kind of got caught in a relationship that he really didn't want to be in, but he was going to make the best of it for his own sake. Um, and the brothers, uh, I applaud them for defending their sister. That's what a big brother is supposed to do. Um, I really like the story. This was a nice story and it had a, it had a message to me. Um, for one, if you're not ready to be in a relationship, don't get in a relationship. Uh, and definitely don't cross some guys, uh, or I should say, don't cross a woman who has big brothers, um, or even little brothers, uh, because brothers do protect their sisters, and that's just that's just a fact. Um, so yeah, uh, bro, bro, Snake got what he deserved, and I'm sorry he lost his magic, but hey, I guess that's for a good reason, you know. Um, now the second story, walk under me. I really want to know what happened with the beast, with the monster. Like, I mean, imagining this uh, creature while reading the story had me wondering, was it a giant chicken, <laughs> a bird, uh, uh, an ostrich? <laughs> like, what was it? All I, could, I mean, I figured it was some kind of a bird creature, but I really wanted to know what it was um and i really wish um that i could find out if anyone out there has um, knowledge to this story and what the actual beast is please contact me i would love to know what this beast is and it's fascinating um it was an intelligent um jack mandora or brother nancy or um uh, mr nancy whatever you guys call him uh he shows his intellect, you know, um, shows his intellect uh, on how to get rid of the beast. And it just it just ran off um, to die somewhere, somehow. Don't know. Well, those were two great stories. Um, I will have more stories coming from Anansi, more stories coming from the Jack Mandora version of Anansi in the future. And, you know, uh, Let's do it. Um, let's look forward to more of these stories. Um, if you have stories that you would like me to read, please send them to me. Um, and with that being said, talk to you later. Thank you for your time. You can find us on Anchor spotify google Podcasts, or itunes or wherever you may listen to podcasts you may also find us on instagram and facebook at afro tales podcast all one word or on twitter at afro tales cast please share comment like leave a rating so others may find us just as you have again i'm amon mazingo this is afro tales podcast and until next time have a great day <laughs>